Connection. What does that word mean to you? What does it make you think about? Do you think about your spouse? Your cell phone? That commercial you saw last weekend that made you cry? I was born in 1994, right on the cusp of being a millennial, but still young enough to understand some of those Gen Z references. I grew up playing Relivio, texting T9, and no, I was not allowed to have a MySpace, you're 11 years old. So I used my friends instead. I'm the last generation to remember 9-11. I'm in a ton of college debt and use Twitter as my personal diary. Growing up, millennials experienced all of life's classic moments. Being asked out for the first time, being told I love you, even finding out the death of a loved one. But for millennials and generations beyond, most of that stuff happened on a screen, not face to face. Nobody likes you, read a text on my tiny juke phone in the sixth grade. You're annoying, said another. Those words hurt, but the worst was in high school when you were waiting for any sort of word to pop up on your phone. Nothing, just silence. I think that might be the worst kind of speech, just saying nothing at all. You're so pretty, was a comment under my Instagram. I craved it. I needed the validation. I stared at the picture, angling every angle of me, an inch of fat, a hair out of place. Was I pretty? I needed the validation to feel a part of something. So, how have all these interactions online changed us? Because we grew up with so much information at our fingertips and because we seem to be so connected through all of these social media platforms. I sometimes wonder if we've lost the appreciation for words and how important they can be. In one way, it has made millennials and beyond unable to connect on a physical and personal level. However, it's also catapulted us into a unique position in understanding the online user. Becoming a search engine optimization coordinator has helped me utilize these unique skills that many millennials possess and turn it into a career opportunity. Understanding how people use words has been a rewarding challenge. Putting myself in other people's shoes when growing up connected but so disconnected from emotion was something I had to think really hard about. And I think most people do nowadays. Millennials grew up analyzing every form of communication on the internet. And because of this, they're in a unique position to help businesses learn, grow, and attract new customers. We analyze every single word that comes our way. If you go on a date and he texts you hey with one Y, there will not be a second date. <laughs> if he texts you hey with three Ys, you should start planning nuptials. <laughs> but seriously, I started to realize this when my dad started texting. He would text me and he would ask where I was and I would let him know and he would say K. K. I'd call him and I would say hi, is everything all right? And he would say yeah, why? Well, because you said K. <laughs> he now knows to send me okay unless he wants me calling him in a panic. I think understanding millennials in the workplace is the same thing. People think we want instant promotions, but I don't think that's exactly it. In a world where we are seeking constant validation, we'll post a good picture to Facebook or Instagram, or you know, if we learn a song on guitar, make Dean's List and we watch as the likes roll in. A millennial puts a lot of work in on a project, hands it in, and hears nothing. Just silence. Like I said earlier, we don't do silence. A lot of people talk about the trophy theory. Growing up, we were all given trophies, and now we constantly want to be praised. But I don't think we want to be praised. We want a response. You see, we've left ourselves in this constant feedback loop where you're texting your significant other all day, or your best friend, or you submit an assignment and the next day it's uploaded with a grade. It's not a praise thing, it's a response thing. We need to feel as though a connection has been made, good or bad. I really like how you suggested we do some more personalized targeted ads, or I don't like how you had no data to back that up. We need to feel as though a connection has been made so we know where we went right, or where we went wrong, and how we can be better next time. We tend to be perfectionists. <laughs> this hyper-focused habit that a lot of us have gotten into, this idea of perfectionism, has made a lot of us incredibly anxious. 
Just ask my fluoxetine prescription. The American Psychological Association puts the average stress level of Americans at a 4.9 on a 10-point scale. A healthy level is a 3.4. Millennials report a 5.6 level of stress. And why wouldn't we be We're analyzing every word that comes our way? Boss sent me an email with no exclamation point? I'm getting fired. <laughs> Got less than 100 likes on my Instagram? I'm ugly. <laughs> However, it's also created smarter consumers. We can detect ads that baby boomers may take at face value. We don't post a, I declare Facebook can't use my information because it's mine every three months because we understand it's a farce. <laughs> we have online superpowers in a sense. The words best and get it now don't do it anymore. We're skeptical of anybody that's telling us it's the best or for a limited time. You see, we spend so much time curating our own fake content on our own social media platforms, trying to create this idea of perfect that we're going to see when an advertisement is doing it too. We want brands that are authentic, that are real. We want real people to tell us why we should invest in a product. Why? It all comes back to connection, our feedback loop. We want to feel connected to your brand. We want to feel connected to the boy that texts us three whys, and we want to feel connected to the woman advertising Dove soap with wrinkles and blemishes on her face, because we know we all have those too. Millennials, you can do more than just create an aesthetically pleasing Instagram feed with these superpowers. And employers could be missing the mark by not hiring a millennial with a bird's eye in view of the internet. Put the meaning back in words. Start a meaningful campaign. Really reach out to your consumer. Next time you consider commenting on someone's Instagram, think about telling them face to face how much they mean to you. The heart of advertising has and always will be human connection. That's all anybody really wants anyways, to feel something, to be connected. Thank you.